like I did with the Aegis Max for the durability test I wanted to test it in real life scenarios obviously the most common way to break a phone or a mod is to drop it in water with a mop bucket or with a river or toilet whatever so I tested it in water it was boiling up water it was tap hot and it worked perfectly fine we had a problem next up based on a real life event I thought the paint test again it's brilliant it's a good way of finding out where the liquids actually get into so I cracked out the paint chuck mod in submerged it got it out and cleaned it off now although it all cleaned off nice and easy and pretty well I should also know that the pin did get behind the button or at least the water did for quite a few clicks after probably five or six clicks the uh, white water kept coming out but obviously the button is waterproof as well so just because it's behind the button doesn't mean waterproof doesn't work Clean it up real good. And obviously, it still works. That bit of water you've just seen is from the water test. It's not actually leakage into the system. Now, on this bit, I did for the same old thing. If you leave it on top of your car and drive off, will it break? Now, I left the pod on this, which I didn't do with the Aegis Max. I took the tank off. Left the pod on, and the pod came off. Now, I'm a bit mixed on whether that's a good thing or not, because in my theory, the pod would have broke on the next bit without a doubt. But as it were at this moment, it stayed working just fine. Happy days. So what happens when you come back looking for it and you accidentally run over it? Ran over with front tyre. Ran over it with back tyre. Ran over it with back tyre again. And left it on. Here's a pod. And there's the mod. Now it looked like it had been bent in a little bit on the skeleton at the top. And it had the pod didn't fit properly. Now on the pod there's little ribs right at the top to make sure the pod sits right. And it was pretty much just the, them bits were the biggest issue. Um... Although, at the very start, you can see the pod didn't fit in at all. The skeleton is replaceable, but obviously that's no good, because the pod doesn't stay on without the skeleton, so temporarily be screwed. So I figured, I wonder if I can bend it back with curb. And we're about 5-10 minutes worth of faffing about and trying to rebend it. It is really durable and tough. I did manage to get it into a point where I could get the pod back on but it was still very tight Boom, it works. But it was still quite tight. 
and the button, as, as you look here, it didn't quite fit down properly. It's slightly raised, especially on the front and side. So I figured with a bit more precision, I'd get the pliers and just bend it out that little bit more to make it fit like it should. At first, there was a bit of a problem with the button. It didn't really catch on properly and it was a bit loose. Although it was still quite hot on there properly, it was a bit loose. You have to remember the pod holds on to the skeleton, not the actual mod. So if this does break, you can always just buy another skeleton. Which are quite cheap. I think online, skeletons are generally about £6. But all in all, the mod works perfectly fine, all is well.